uh, there's any difficulty hearing me. I'll try to project, but I'm not experienced with microphones. I um, am very honored to be here today and appreciate those of you who have come to hear about uh, my father and, uh, of course, Mr. Heller's book. Um, my father was Attorney General under President Truman from 1945 to 1949 and then was appointed to the Supreme Court in 1949 and served for 18 years until 1967. My father died in 1977, June 13, 1977, and this is the first biography, which is rather amazing. I feel he has been neglected and um, have tried to solve that uh, difficulty with my biography. I had never written a biography or any book uh, in 1977. I never thought about it. But at the memorial service um, for my father in Dallas, Texas, my brother, Ramsey, said, Mimi, why don't you consider writing a biography of Dad? Ramsey does not remember saying that. but. Um, he planted a seed that had a very long germination, <laughs> almost 30 years. And uh, I'm happy to say I did persist. It is not the ideal way to write a book, uh, but at that time I still had three of our five daughters at home. I was working as a reference librarian at Northern Virginia Community College, and I had a husband who liked to have a little attention. So I couldn't just immerse myself into the biography. Uh, fortunately, I did start interviewing people, many of whom um, are no longer with us today. Two of my father's sisters were still living, and my mother, of course, and also three of the justices who served on the court with my father. Justices Brennan, um, uh, Potter Stewart, and Byron White. And those interviews also uh, certainly enriched the book and were a great advantage. I, as I say, I'd never written, so I had the great idea of uh, enrolling in a class or in a degree program at George Mason University for a master's in English. And um, as you now know, that um, master's thesis that I wrote for that degree is the basis for the first section of the book, uh, the early years. These were the years in Dallas um, before my father joined the federal government in 1937. Now, um, in 1937, my father was 37. He was in private practice, his own law practice. It was flourishing. He had an opportunity he thought to be appointed Assistant Attorney General at the Department of Justice of the Claims Division. He, um, we never intended to leave Dallas permanently. This was going to be a one or two year um, adventure. He always loved a challenge, he always loved new things, and I think he really felt it would be good for the law practice if he had this opportunity in Washington, D.C. and took advantage of it. Washington was very different then, <laughs> 1937, a long time ago, still more of a small southern town. Uh, Hitler was on the scene, still uh, fooled by some people as far as the threat he presented to the world. Um, they were just starting to build the Thomas Jefferson Memorial, and there was a lot of criticism of it. And President Roosevelt had just um, presented a plan called the, known as the court packing plan, um, that would allow him to appoint more justices. The Supreme Court was blocking his er, efforts to deal with the Depression. And the court packing plan was his way of trying to bypass the court. 
Now, I'm not going to tell you how that uh, impacted my father. You'll have to read the book. But um, I will tell you that when my father arrived in Washington, he discovered he was not an assistant attorney general. He was a special assistant to the attorney general. And he was not very special. There were about a hundred of them. <laughs> <laughs> Furthermore, he was assigned to the War Risk Litigation Office, known as the graveyard of the Department of Justice because so many careers ended there, I think. There was uh, very little opportunity. He didn't want to go back to Dallas. There had been a lot of hullabaloo about his appointment. And he really wanted to become an assistant attorney general before he returned. So he stayed and um, got some recognition at this war risk litigation office. And within a year was able to get another position with the um, antitrust division of the Department of Justice. At that time, um, a very dynamic assistant attorney general named Thurman Arnold headed the um, antitrust division. I suspect many of you know that name because of the law firm Arnold Porter, etc., which remains a very prominent law firm in, in Washington. Um, in 1941, um, no, excuse me, 1940, Thurman Arnold sent my father to California to head up the West Coast offices of the Department of Justice, of the Antitrust Division's offices. So in December 7th, 1941, our family was living in Beverly Hills. Um, we had a furnished home. A gardener was um, part of that, and it cost $150 a month. So there's another times have changed situation. The, um, of course, the Japanese internment was a result of the bombing of um, Hawaii, of Pearl Harbor. Um, and my father, because he was already on the West Coast heading up the Department of Justice's offices was chosen to be the coordinator between the Army and the Department of Justice. He was not a policymaker. He was uh, not in really a position to be a policymaker, but he was very involved in that policy. Um, he was assigned the um, responsibility of finding internment camps for the Japanese. I spent a lot of time reading old newspaper articles from the Los Angeles Times, and I can tell you that the West Coast was hysterical. There were all kinds of rumors of sabotage. Um, the papers were very critical of, of um, what was going on as far as the Japanese. And while my father did not um, uh, was not responsible for making a decision about the policy, he was very involved. Uh, I'd just like to read a little bit to you from the book. I'd like to um, first read something that my father testified before Congress that gives you an idea of his initial feelings about the internment. Initially, really, they were not for it. Uh, it was the pressure from the West Coast, the Department of Justice particularly, uh, was opposed to that internment, but were eventually convinced that it was necessary. This is a, a statement my father made before Congress in March of 1942. If military authorities in whom I have the utmost confidence tell me it is necessary to remove from my area, the citizens, as well as the aliens of a certain nationality or of all nationalities, I would say the best thing to do would be to follow the advice of the doctor. Whenever you go to the doctor, if he tells you to take aspirin, you take aspirin. If he tells you to cut off your leg so you can save your body, you cut off your leg. 